All right, what's up guys? So um, I'll be see you again with a fourth video of analyzing challenge Orion players. Uh, this time I changed the player because uh, in the comments you guys let me know that Viper was playing a lot of Ribbon nowadays. Um, so I decided to go on to the NA server and check his game as well. So it would be interesting, like we will see if um, Viper has a different play style than, than Built because I haven't watched Viper that much uh, nowadays, like I used to watch him quite a lot, uh, like years ago. Um, let's see, okay, so um, we have the Aatrox matchup, which is a pretty common matchup nowadays, like Aatrox is uh, definitely up there in the, the tier list, definitely a champion that you're gonna see a lot in solo queue, at least if you're playing relatively high low. Uh, I don't know if people play him in our elo or average elo, but that's definitely one of the best pick uh, in high elo at least. So, um, Aatrox matchup is not a it's not a counter matchup in on either side if the matchup is played properly, because Aatrox has the possibility to never die to Riven while being able to say uh, to farm safely. But at the same time, Riven should not die either, technically. I mean, um, Viper went Ignite and Aatrox went TP. So there's a chance that we see some solo kills going on uh, in the top lane on Viper's side. But it, that's a matchup that can be pretty highly focused uh, by the junglers. Uh, let me hide the time control so we don't get spoiled. <clears throat> so it's a matchup that you can pretty much abuse as a jungler, I think, I mean, like, if you give prior priority to someone in this matchup, the matchup can go can go ham pretty quickly. So there's a ward right there. So this ward is because, so th that's a ward you can put down literally every game. Like, you can go here and put a ward down around here, around 125, 130, because a ward lasts 60 seconds. And usually the, uh, the jungler will get to the second buff around 250. So most of the time this world uh, gives you the information you need. And if the enemy jungler decides to skip camps, which can be the case with Elise, uh, you're aware of that and you, you know if you're gonna get ganked earlier than what you should. Because El Elise players usually like to go for the red buff and skip the entire bot side. I don't exactly know if they do raptors into blue or if they just go like red buff into wolves and blue or just blue and, and romp. But basically, Elise player like to Elise players like to skip like to skip a few camps just to gank uh, pretty fast. So we're gonna have the information right there. So we already got the, the lane priority on Viper's side. So Hrox did not leash, but it still arrived. He still uh, arrived pretty late in lane, which gave Viper time to just like set up the wave. Um, let's see if the okay. So Hrox plays with point plating, which is gonna come back up soon. So um, right there, you just want to dodge the Qs. And once the Q run, runs out, you may eventually try to go for a bone planning proc, but it's not gonna happen because uh, Viper's third Q is gonna run out. There's a chance that Viper starts to extend to extend his Qs to get the bone planning proc at some point. Or he can just decide to play the lane like in a passive way to just get the wave crash. Because right now, if he starts losing HP in trail, okay, so there is the bone planning proc, like I said. Exactly like I said, because yeah, if you if you start taking a trade and you lose it or you take too much damage against Elise, which can gank you like pretty quickly. Okay, so now we have the information. By the way, we see that Elise has eight minions, which means that she did two camps, and it seems like she be, she's doing the grump and the blue buff at the same time. Okay, no, only the, the grump, which is uh... okay. So now we have we have all the informations we need on Viper's side. But yeah, like I said, she skipped camps. She didn't do the, okay, so the, she skipped the wolves. And she's gonna go for the gank even before she did the blue buff. And Viper does not have this information, but he should know, I think. Because we see that Elise, I mean, well, well if, if you're Viper, you can actually miss this, this information. Because the Elise could be doing the blue buff right there. And so that's the thing. Usually the jungler ganks you at around like three minutes, maybe 250. 
But like I said, Elise players will always skip camps and gank you earlier than most of the, of the junglers. And usually you don't get ganked until you get at least a three wave crash. But right there, we can't, like we haven't been able to three wave crash yet because the third wave is not even here. Which means that it's a bad timing. But Viper is most likely playing safe right there because he knows that Elise can come at any time. So I don't think he's gonna die. And it doesn't seem like she wants to gank, which means that she could... Okay, never mind, she's there. Took her a long time to come though. He's gonna flash and he's gonna try to wall jump over that. He doesn't have Q for a, a few times. Okay, so... Hrox should stop chasing and go back to top lane, exactly. Because if, he's, if he started to chase too long, uh, he would be losing a lot of farm. And now, um, Viper doesn't play with TP, right? So right now, Aatrox could just freeze the lane and totally fuck Viper's lane over. And I think that's what's gonna happen. He's, gonna, he's just gonna like hold the wave right there and just last hit. Maybe trim the wave a little bit so it doesn't push too fast. But now, the Viper's lane is kinda, I mean, technically it should be kinda doomed if the Aatrox plays well. But it seems like we can maybe get a kill here. I don't mind. Oh, maybe with the Ariana. Yeah, the Elise should die right there. I can, I mean, action as well. So he's gonna flash. No, he's, he doesn't have flash, he's dead. So that's okay. Okay, the kill is pretty good here. Because the gang from Elise kinda fucked up Viper's lane. But the fact that he managed to get a kill right there kinda compensate for the lack of, uh, of XP. Um, but yeah, Aatrox still has the freeze right there, so even with that one kill here, like the lane should not be winnable until until a few times. So yeah, Elise is gonna get the blue buff. So yeah, just like I said before the, the game even started, Elise players are going, uh, at least the, the good Elise players, so the, 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 the Elise players you're gonna see in like high low. Because if you play maybe, I don't know, let's say gold, platinum, uh, the Elise players are gonna do the clear, like the same clear as a, as a K, you know, what, whatever jungler. Uh, those full clear, but in higher elo, uh, the good elite players are always gonna skip camps, and you're always gonna get ganked earlier than what what, what you should do. Because um, like I said, usually a jungler is gonna do a full clear or almost a full clear, like by skipping, the, they may skip the Krugs, and you're gonna get ganked around 250. But 250 is the timing in which you can get the the three wave crash. So if you do a three wave crash and you get ganked. That means that your, your opponent in the top lane cannot follow the gank because the wave is going to be stacked up under tower. And if you decide to do a four wave crash instead, then you're going to get ganked on this one spot here, but you're going to have so many minions with you. The wave won't be under tower, but you're going to have so many minions that you can maybe turn the fight around. Obviously, this depends on the matchups. Like There are matchups in which having a big minion wave won't change, won't change anything, but against champions that are not like too strong in the early game, your minion wave can fuck them up. So now we still have a freeze on Aatrox's side, but it should be uh, slow pushing back to Vapors pretty soon, never mind, he queued the wave, so he still has a freeze uh, for a little bit here. So he, Viper cannot do too much right there. Uh, he has to farm with Qs and then just like go back with E so he doesn't take the uh, Aatrox Q. That's a bad situation because if you take one, one Aatrox Q here, you can lose so much HP. So he, yeah, like I said, Q in to get blasted, but then instantly E out, so you don't take the Q damage. He, he, like Viper wants to try and crash the wave right there, so the, the Aatrox cannot freeze forever. Kane is here in backup, but there's not much he can do. Maybe the best choice would be to, uh, for Kane to come to the lane right there and force the wave crash, but Aatrox uh, is not gonna die, but at least Kane is gonna help to crash the wave right there. Yep. So yeah, if you get frozen like that, like Viper does, most of the time, like if you really can't crash the wave, you need to call help uh, for your jungler to come and to help you crash the wave. Even like in this scenario, Kane tried to go for the kill because there was a like a potential kill that you, we could get right there. Like you see that Aatrox took a lot of damage, so there's no kill here because he healed up and uh, went to the tower. But now your jungler can just like force the wave. You get the reset. So I think Viper should be going back to base right there. Oh, they want to go for the dive. Okay, that's that's, that's smart. We have the... Okay. I think they want to go for the dive because Elise showed up. Let's see. So they crashed the wave. And then... 
Did we know that Elise was both sides? Just, I think they just knew because of the, of the tracking. Like, she didn't even have to show up. They just, like, kept track of the Elise. That just made sense that she was both side. So they want to go for the dive. Which should be a key right there. Because Aatrox does not want to go back. I mean, it, he actually should have went B earlier because he has TP, right? So at this point right there, right, when he gets stuck by Kane, he should have went B right there. Like, hide in Fog of War and instantly back. Because there's a cannon. The cannon is full HP, so it's going to be tanking for a long time. So you have time to go B and TP back to lane, and you won't lose the XP from the cannon. But Aatrox decided to stay, to stay for some weird reasons. Like, the only reason you will stay as Aatrox right there is if you were about to get level 6, which technically is not the case because there's a cannon tanking, so you won't be able to, to get level 6 until the cannon dies because killing the minions right there will take too long. Or if your jungler was near to counter the dive, but it's not like it's not the case for any of those things. Unless the cannon dies right there, they, they're, they're not for... If that's a bad call maybe? Never mind, okay. It's gonna be one for one. Executed. Oh, okay, never mind, that, that's a perfect, okay. They took a long time to engage the dive right there. I think it's, they just wanted for, to wait for the Q to run out. Yeah, they didn't want to go into the third Q right there, and now they can go in. Exactly. But Aatrox got 6, and uh, I think Cage should have been the one tanking, because he could have... Let's see. Kane had to take the, the aggro first, because he can just like run away with his E afterwards, and he's... Oh, okay, I was gonna say he has flash, but he does not. Yeah, I think just Kane tanking would have been better, because he can just E into the wall. I mean, it's still a nice call, because it's an execute, right? And the wave is already crashed in the tower. But Viper could have got like could have gotten the, the plate on top of that. So it's always like a small bonus. So now Aatrox tip is back to lane. Viper is gonna come back to lane with Kindle Gem and Warhammer. Um There's not much kill potential right there for uh, Viper. Because he's level 5 to level 7. Uh, and the XP gap right there is mainly due uh, because of the, the the level 2 gank in which uh, allowed Aatrox to freeze forever. Like, Viper lost so much XP with that one gank, uh, yeah, level 2 from it is. So now Vi Viper has to wait for level 6 until uh, uh, to have a potential chance to get a kill. But since he does not have pickaxe and has killed Kindle Gem instead, I don't think he's gonna have the damage to kill him. The Kindle Gem allows him to survive and to not die, but that denies the potential kill if the Aatrox fucks up. But like I said uh, in the, like at the start of the video, if Aatrox doesn't fuck up, he should never die in a 1v1 situation, so... I'm gonna speed it up right there. So this is gonna be a slow push. Viper is gonna be slow pushing the wave. Aatrox is mid, going back to base. So now he's pushing a bit faster. Okay, so he wants to crash the big wave right there. Um, I didn't keep track of the jungler, but there's a chance that he wants to crash the wave because he's scared that the Elise is on the, the timing for, for top side. Because if she's padding top side right now and Viper will be, will be slow pushing, there's a chance that he will die and get frozen. So Elise is both side, but Galio is top side. So it's a good thing that they actually pushed the wave. Because if Galio decided to get to come top when Viper was like slow pushing right like on this one spot here, he would potentially have to like either give up the wave or just die to the gank, and then Aatrox would be freezing again, which would, would actually suck. That's why sometimes you don't want to slow push and you just want to crash the wave instantly. Because by the time you're slow pushing, you allow like you give room for the enemy to come to come gank you. And if they gank you when the, the wave hasn't crashed yet, then they're gonna get frozen, unless you can break the freeze. But. So now it's in interesting because Aatrox doesn't want to play the lane anymore. He starts roaming a lot, which gives a lot of room for for Viper to just get some farm and, and try to catch up uh, with the XP. So, as, as we can see, Viper is almost level 8, and I think Aatrox 
is far from the level 9. Yeah, he, he, he's only at like 50% um, XP. He's gonna get that one way though. But you can see that Viper was like two levels behind, and now he's not even like... He, he's like, I don't know, 70% of XP behind maybe. Which is already much better than what it was. And that's mainly because Aatrox started to roam a lot and lose a lot of XP. And the good thing about that is that Aatrox did not even get anything up, off of the rooms. I mean, he put some pressure, but he didn't get any assist or any Shut kills. Down. And now he's behind uh, in CS. So there's a lot of things going on both sides. Uh, Viper's team seems to be winning, so Viper does not even have to, to move. He can just take the, uh, the top side and go. Aatrox is gonna try to contest maybe. So maybe there's gonna be a fight right there. But yeah, as you can see, like they just don't fight at all. Like they, they never really fought 1v1, but that's just because the matchup is that way. I mean, in high low, when both players are good, there's no chance that either of one die, technically. I mean, you know, fuck up happens. Sometimes people are gonna int or fuck up, so they give room for a free kill. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, he doesn't have the information on Aes, and he wants to crash this one wave here because if he does not, he's gonna get frozen again. But at the same time, he probably knows that Elise is topside, considering that she was bot side earlier, which means that she can only be going topside. And Aatrox is being way too aggressive right now, which gives the information the information away. If I were Viper here, I would be suspicious because Aatrox has not been, he hasn't been playing aggressively at all during the entire game. And all of a, all of a sudden, he starts fighting in a big ass minion wave, which means that He's forcing a fight for his jungler, exactly, see, like, that was kinda obvious, I'm kinda surprised Viper didn't, didn't know about it, because Aatrox has been playing so passively uh, the entire time, like, he hasn't been trying to play aggressively 1v1 at all the entire game, and then all of a sudden he tries to fight in a big minion wave, which, which just doesn't make sense. Okay, so no cocoon, okay. He's gonna die here, he's not, not chance of, of surviving. Yeah, he, he basically just died because uh, he didn't think about it. And there's two things that surprised me about it, because Elise just died bot side when the, the team fought around the Drake. So we know that she had her bot side cleared, which means that when she, she's gonna respawn, she's gonna be padding to the top side because the Drake is done, like the Drake is gone. So she has no reason to come back bot. She has no camps, there's no objective to get. So unless she wants to try like a desperate gank bot, uh, that doesn't make sense. She should be padding top side to maybe get a cl like to clear or maybe get the rift or whatever. So if you're Viper in this situation, you should be thinking about it and you should know that the jungler should be top side. And then when Ad when Aatrox starts playing super aggressive all of, all, of all of a sudden, then he cannot give the information away. So yeah, he flashes away, but then he dies. Like he, he can't take that path because there's no. I mean, he could have tried maybe to try to take this one path and dodge the cocoon with, with his E. Like he doesn't want to take that path, that, that padding here because it's so closed. Like it's so easy for Elise to hit her her E right there, and even if you try to bait it by walking up and walking back, uh, I think at this elo. I mean, El the Elise player at this hero should be patient and they won't like throw their E just so easily. So he's gonna try to jump over the wall right there. He's gonna take the plant, I think. No, he's a... He'll be taking the plant here and try to jump there, but I think it's, it makes it so easy for Elise to hit the cookie. It's uh, actually annoying padding. I mean, Ariana could have tried to help maybe, or, uh, maybe earlier, because now it's too late. And th th there's just nothing he can do now. So yeah, he just dies because uh, he didn't he didn't think of Elise. There's not much to analyze in this one game though, because like I say, they just don't play the matchup. And I can't really show you guys how to to win versus Aatrox because uh, there's not uh, nothing happening really. So um, I'm not gonna look more into that. I think it was still interesting to see because it, it, it showed you 
how Elise works, I guess. And it shows you it shows you also how a gang can fuck the lane up just because of the freeze. I mean technically it should have it should have fucked Viper over. But he still managed to come back to I mean, like into this matchup just because the H Rocks left the lane for no reason by going mid a lot and not getting anything off of that. So um, H Rocks kinda won the matchup early because of Elise, but he wasn't good enough in the lane to abuse that lead. I would say that Viper was be uh, is Viper is better, but Viper did not even like do anything special in this game. It's just basically H Rocks not doing anything and wasting his lead. So um, yeah, that's it for this video. I think um, I hope this was still helpful, even though we didn't know too much about the matchup. But yeah, have a nice day. Peace out.